Hey, what's going on, guys? Sick Designs here, and uh, today I wanted to teach you guys how to make uh, another pretty cool intro. Um, it's going to give you guys a heads up. I really uh, don't have any set plan for what I'm going to do here, so I'm just going to kind of do things uh, on the fly. So basically, this whole intro is going to be improv. So, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of experiment with some things and see what I can come up with. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you find it enjoyable. And uh, yeah, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna open up Cinema 4D, and I'm gonna change my width to 1280, and my height to 720, so that we are in HD. We're gonna come down to the frame range, and press all frames. Come down to save. Let's select uh, AVI movie as a format. Uh, Let's go down to options. Let's change the ray depth to two, the reflection depth to two also, and the shadow depth to six. And what this will do, it'll help speed up rendering times. I will come down to effect, go to ambient occlusion, and then also come down to effect and go down to global illumination. And uh, go ahead and go to the irradiance catch. Uh, change the stochastic samples to low, the record density density to low, and the smoothing to weak. All right, so we're done there. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do here is uh, drop down a plane. So go up to the cube icon, uh, select plane. Now we're gonna come over to the width and the height and change these values to about 3,000 or so. Okay, so we have something like that. All right, now we're just gonna apply material uh, right here so onto the plane so double click down here double click the material and uh, I you know I personally like kind of a lighter color almost white and then bring the brightness up to about hundred and ten percent and then just taking this material and dragging it straight onto the plane here okay so we have that and uh, if we go ahead and render preview this you'll notice that we have uh, just a black screen well that's because we need some lighting so like in the majority of my videos, I use a preset called uh, Grayscale Gorilla. Um, the guy out there that does a lot with Cinema 4D, pretty advanced stuff, and he's really good at what he does. And he uh, made this uh, lighting preset, lighting presets for you to use. And uh, so I use them quite often because I think uh, I think they help a lot. Anyways, the the it's a, the preset costs about seventy dollars, and you have to install it into Cinema 4D. It's kind of like an add-on. And uh, um, I recommend getting it if you can. You know, there are ways out there of getting it for free, of course. But, um, yeah, any way you can get it, I recommend it. Um, I don't know. It just kind of helps light up your scenes a little bit easier. Like, for example, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, if I go to Window Content Browser, uh, wait for a second for this to load up. My computer is probably running a little bit slow right now because I'm recording this audio in Cool Edit Pro, and I'm also running a full scan of my computer because I've had several viruses on it. So, anyways, um, yeah, you can see here like got an overhead softbox. So if I want to drop that in, for example, I'll just double click down here, and it's already in my scene. I personally like the overhead and the ring of light the best with a spotlight added as well. So if I just double click the spotlight, you can see it shows up right here and it's actually already in the scene and now I've got some lighting okay so now if I go ahead and decide to render preview this uh, you can see we've actually got something to look at you know it's nothing special of course because you know nothing's going on but you know we have an image okay so the first thing uh, we're gonna do to start off this intro is go up to MoGraph Mo text and this will give us a text object as you can see here and um, what I'm what I'm gonna do is um, just all right. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and change this to whatever I want. So of course my YouTube channel name, and uh, so we have that. And now we're just gonna change the depth to I don't know, say 80 maybe, something like that. And uh, another thing I want to point out is. Make sure you pay attention to these gray bars here on the side because, um, you know, whatever you render out in the final animation or image, it's only going to render what's inside of here. So none of this out here will actually be rendered. So you need to pay very close attention to that. 
So like if I have it set right here and I render this out, then this is actually this part of this or most of the Z is going to get cut off in the final animation. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and if you want to go down here and change the font, then just come down here. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do here? Now we'll do this one. I do this one a lot in a lot of my videos. I don't know, I just kind of like the looks of it. It's called, uh, I think it's X... X rod or X I rod or something like that. Anyways, all right. So we have our we have our text now, and uh, all right. So now we need to um, go ahead and apply material to this uh, font here to our text. So let's go up to double click down there to create another new material, and we'll come here and uh, select a color. As a matter of fact, before we even do that, I want to point something out. Now, say you want the text, like each individual letter itself, to be colored differently. Because if I go ahead and just take this material here, and I pick a color, for example, and just drag it on the text, you notice it highlights all of it, and they can, you know, the entire text is that color. Well, maybe we don't want that. So what you need to do is, um, first you'll get rid of that. Uh, with your text selected, as you can see it's highlighted, press C on the keyboard. And now that makes the text uh, what we call editable. So you can actually edit e each individual letter. So like say I just wanted uh, this color on the S, well then I would just drag it straight onto the S and you notice that it doesn't actually uh, color the entire word here. So that's another cool thing. Uh, just thought I'd point that out for you guys. Um, so I'm just going to end up highlighting the whole thing. So um, let's see. Let's go. I'll do I'll do one whole solid color just to kind of speed things up a little bit. I'll make it a blue. Go down to reflection. Change the brightness to about 4%. And go down to texture. And select for now. And then change the mix strength to 4% also. This is all on personal preference. But quite honestly, I think this looks best. Okay, so now we're just going to take this material. Actually, I'm going to highlight, since I, uh, if I just do this now, it'll only apply to one letter, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do is highlight all these letters, and I'm going to right-click on this, on this texture here, and just do uh, blue, white, blue, white. So we got a pattern here. So if we go ahead and render that, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so that looks pretty good so far. Um, so far, so good. Um, so like I said in the beginning of this tutorial, I'm just kind of improving things right now, so there's no set thing what I have planned to do. Um, so just bear with me. There's a couple dead spots in here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I should do for you guys. Ah, uh, let's see. Hmm. I have an idea. How about how about we make this text uh, fall down and bounce? So what I mean by that is. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight, if you went ahead and pressed C on the keyboard to edit, edit this, highlight all the letters, and let's go down to simulation tags, and let's go to rigid body. Okay, so now we have a rigid body tag applied to all these, and you can see it falls now. Uh, the text actually has dynamics to it, um, but you notice it is falling through the floor whenever we uh, play the animation. Um, so to fix that, it's really easy. We're just going to right click on the plane that we created, go to simulation tags, and select collider body. So now whenever we play this, you can see it collides. And uh, if we really want this text to bounce a lot, 
Uh, then we're going to come up to the actual text object. Really, I should have done this before, but um, down here you'll notice the bounce right here. If you click on the simulation tag of the letter, and you'll notice bounce. You change this to like 500%. And once again, I'm only affecting just this one letter. But if we just uh, bring this up, bring this whole thing up, and play it, the S should bounce more than the rest of the letters, as you can see there. So that bounced quite a bit. And we'll just have to do that for the rest of them, so... Just highlighting all these right now. Changing the bounce to about 100%. So you can see all these have been, the value has been changed to 100%. The S is a little bit too high at 500, so I'm just going to bring this down to 100%. So now when they hit, you know, you can see that they bounce. You can also do the same thing to the plane as well. So if we select the plane, go to Dynamics Body, and we scroll down here a little bit, you'll see the bounce again. So if we bring this up to 150%, and maybe bring the friction down to about 15%, and when we play this, it should bounce even more, as you can see there, because we have... Um, you know, we made the actual surface here that it's colliding with a lot more bounce here as well. Um, so you can see they fall and they just kind of bounce all over the place. Now you notice, maybe you want this animation to last longer. And you can see it gets cut off. And then just come down here, uh, select a certain amount of frames that you want. So if you're playing this back at 30 frames per second, 90 frames is only going to be a 3 second animation. So 500 will give you some extra length and a longer uh, playing animation. So if we play this now with 500 frames, you can see it just keeps going and going and going. It doesn't get cut off quite so quickly. Um, now, what I really like to do is uh, actually go ahead and just bring this up out of the frame zoom in down here where we play it it drops into the frame and just kind of bounces everywhere now a cool little touch we can do since this happens so quickly is right here on the very first frame we'll go up to edit project settings dynamics and we can actually adjust the time scale here so if we go ahead and just press uh, change this value or actually on the time scale Control click on here, change the value to 0%. Control click again, that makes a keyframe. So now nothing will happen. Say we want it uh, two seconds in, so 60 frames to start falling into the picture. We'll go ahead and keyframe this again. Change this to 100% keyframe. So now it'll play, it'll start off. And then it'll fall into the picture. Let's go ahead and move ahead a few frames right when it starts, uh, when it first makes contact with the um, with the plane here. So like about right there. Let's go ahead and keyframe this. Bring the time scale to maybe 10%. Control click again. And you can now see that it happens in slow motion like so. So if we play this total, this whole animation here, comes in, slows way down, just like so. And then say you want to speed it up again, change this value here, and control click, and it plays it back at 100%. Now you've got text bouncing everywhere. So one more time, Slows in, slows down, and speeds up. 
So I basically just improv this guy as I came up with this off the top of my head. Um, now say you want to animate the camera, like right here, right about here. You go up to select camera, go to cameras, use camera, camera, and what we'll do here is go back to the first frame here, keyframe this, and go back to frame 65. And I'll just animate the camera here by rotating it around, zooming in maybe, selecting the keyframe button, and then coming about right here, frame 90, and then coming this way with it, and then about right here, maybe zooming back out. Do something like that. Press the keyframe button. So now if we play this, let's see what we have. And so there you go. That's how you do a simple uh, camera animation. And if we go ahead and just uh, get a screenshot of this just to see, render out one frame just to see what it kind of looked like. Go ahead and, ahead and press the render preview button. As you can see, uh, this does render quite quickly, which is nice. And uh, so that's going to be, that'll be one frame of the overall animation. And uh, so yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, you can make a simple intro that way. Uh, there's a million different ways you can make intros in this program. It's pretty much unlimited. Uh, there's so many uh, different features and different things you can do. Um, you know, but this is just how to make a pretty simple basic intro. Um, you know. But I think that'll do it for this tutorial, guys. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys later. Um, you know, I appreciate you watching this. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really would appreciate my subscribers. Please like the video. Um, you know, I put a lot of time and effort and work into these videos for you guys. So I'd appreciate a like very much. And uh, just in case you were wondering, this background is actually the microphone I'm currently using at the moment. It's the MXL 990. I like it a lot. I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, like my last video, let me know what you think down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Sick designs, and I am out.